So are you saying that we can choose to be happy or we can choose to be miserable? The amount of effort is the same. I think that there might be a slight uh, uh, preference to being miserable, actually. It's, it seems a little easier to be miserable. I don't know why that is. Uh, but it, it does seem like being happy takes a little bit more conscious effort. Um, and uh, perhaps that's just because uh, of our culture or, or our habits or what. Um, but I do know from my own experience that it's very possible to choose and it's very possible to change the habits. Uh, just like uh, I can change my habit of, of uh, going to the gym or not going to the gym, I can also change my habit of uh, choosing to look on the bright side or not look on the bright side, look for the meaning or not, not look for the meaning. And it's really not a matter of overlooking, overlooking your pain or overlooking um, your discomfort. Uh, we, we know when we're very clear about that in the, in the book, this is not about bypassing uh, your pain. It's not about bypassing sadness. It's about taking care of those states um, with, with a mindful attitude um, and knowing that um, you know, we, we are the caretakers of our souls. Um, but if you're feeling sad, if you're feeling pain, then um, adding misery and suffering to your pain is like um, it is is like having a crying baby and um, and crying back at it uh, or yelling at it. We you know if we want to take care of our uncomfortable states, our difficult states, then we do that with with our happiness and our peace and our relaxation and all the states we talk about in your to be list. What about reframing? Because you talked about when you thought you were going to work on your blog and the kids were home at school, instead of being upset, you reframed it as an opportunity to perhaps connect more deeply with your kids and enjoy your time together. So if someone is miserable, couldn't they just reframe what they're miserable about, like you yes, did with that, your adoption? Absolutely. Story? and, and uh, that, that is exactly, you, you hit it on the nose. That's why we uh, uh, t tell the story about the adoption is because there were so many opportunities for us to, uh, I don't know, be, be upset um, and, fearful. and fearful and, and, and uh, yeah, angry and frustrated and stuff. Um, and obviously we did do some of that as well. And that's kind of what the exercises are about as well is it's... it's um, Helping you, we don't use the word reframing necessarily, but it, it, it does uh, help you uh, step through the process of reframing and take uh, normal everyday situations and show you, well, here's one way you could think about it, here's another way you could think about it. And just by reading the exercise and doing it uh, in your mind, uh, you get practice at it. You get practice at, at doing what is effectively re reframing, you're right. Mm -hmm. And we, we, we talk about, you know, if you're, if you're stuck at a red light, you can sit there and you can curse the red light or you can say, well, you know, I've always, I've been waiting all day for uh, nothing to do and here I am at this red light and I've got, I've got nothing to do. So here's my moment I've been waiting for. I'm just going to, you know, breathe and relax and smile. Um, you know, so you take this moment that could be, you know, very frustrating and, um, um, infuriating and you, you could take it all personally and feel that, you know, the red light was out to get you all along, or you can take that moment and just say, you know, this is, this is the quiet moment and the moment, um, with nothing to do that I've been waiting for all day. So hallelujah. So you could say, wow, this is a great opportunity for me to take a few seconds to breathe deeply and relax. I've been waiting to do that all day. This is terrific. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. Why not? Yeah, why not? <laughs> so do you, um, talk about or use or recommend affirmations as well? Uh, not explicitly, no. I think that um, uh, what we really talk about is recognizing uh, the opportunity to choose. It's more about um, uh, seeing and taking advantage of your opportunity and your freedom to choose how you want to be. Um, and affirmations uh, can, can also help you do that, um, and they can also help you remember what it is that you wanted to be in the first place, because that's sometimes mm -hmm. hard, too. Uh, and that's why we recommend actually writing it down into a to-be list, 
just like a to-do list. Because it's, it's hard to remember during the day. You're caught up in meetings, got millions of emails and people calling you and, you know, this and that happening. It's, it's hard to remember. Hey, wait a minute. When I woke up today, I wanted to be balanced today. You know, so how can I use this crazy out of, you know, out of balance situation mm -hmm. at work to practice being balanced? So we, we recommend writing it down in a list. Well, writing it down and reminding yourself is basically an affirmation. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, absolutely. That's absolutely. a very powerful tool. I, it may be a bit premature since your book is weeks away from publication, but do you have any other to-be list titles in the works? <laughs> yeah, you know, it, see, it seemed obvious to us that, that um, uh, this concept could apply to very lots of specific situations. So Lauren, as a, as a parent coach, uh, is uh, already begun work on a book that would be a to-be list for parents. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, parents face their own unique set of challenges and, uh, um, you know, challenges and frustrations and, and uh, have their own needs for, for uh, a to-be list. And so she's going to work on that. And it seems as if... Um, uh, you know, there would be a very great need for one for business as well, uh, for business people who are deluged with uh, uh, emails and phone calls and deadlines and objectives and uh, issues and, you know, all the things that um, I've spent a lot of time working on as well. And so uh, yeah, we do have a number of books that we, we're really interested in writing. <laughs> yeah, we have, we have a... Um uh, we have four kids, like we've said, and our, our oldest is 13 and going into her teenage years. Actually, she's already in her teenage years. And so we thought, you know what, wouldn't it be great to have a to-be list for teens? Mm -hmm. um, because, um, you know, it's a very challenging um, in-between time of life. And um, we think that teens could really benefit from realizing um, that their moments of choice aren't always these moments that we're always harping at them, you know, as parents about, you know, these moments of choice when you're faced with peer pressure, but to see that they have these beautiful, subtle moments of choice in their life also. Um, and those choices that they make um, subtly and steadily through their teenage years will help them become the adult that they, they hope to be. So you want people to wake up every morning and consciously decide, to be or not to be? Yes. I, I choose to be. That is Let the me question. grab that book. <laughs> Great. Well, this is terrific. Thank you so much, Lauren and James, for joining me today. And I really enjoyed talking to you and look forward to more conversations in the future. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Phil. Such a pleasure. <laughs>